grand band like the, the lectern and the microphones. Okay, our brief is a little bit different. Um, and so Martin and I are going to spend the next few minutes talking you through how we're working together as Social Care Wales and Health and Care Research Wales to help build research, innovation and improvement skills for people who work in social care in Wales. So a bit more about how we're helping people along their journey. Okay, so I know that 20 is not a very popular number here in Wales these days, but um, I'm going to use just 20 slides, each of which will show for 20 seconds to illustrate the story so far. So, my organisation is Social Care Wales, and our role is to both regulate and improve the, work, the social care workforce, and we're funded by Welsh Government, and my team has a remit to help people access, use, and generate research, and to innovate. But it's important to understand that when we talk about research, we're starting from a very different place to that of healthcare. So, at the start of this project, we asked practitioners about the barriers to research participation, and they told us about some of the hurdles that they encounter within social care. So, all the stuff that's very familiar to you, a lack of time, a high turnover of staff, little time to reflect, and sometimes a lack of permission from managers to engage in research and innovation activity when there are so many competing pressures. And then we looked at the resources and supporting infrastructure around social care. So there being a complete absence of job roles that are dedicated to research <coughs> engagement or delivery. There's a lack of research skills, training opportunities, and therefore practitioners often lack confidence in research skills and even lack access to research evidence itself. So in response, we're designing an approach to help build those skills and opportunities in a way that we think will work for social care rather than trying to simply lift and shift what happens in healthcare. So we've been working with an organisation called Social Finance on this skills project to help us listen closely to practitioners. Now, I know we shouldn't box people up, but that's not helpful, but we have found it helpful to think about personas. And we found really broadly three types of practitioner. And so persona one is that practitioner who started to see the value of research and innovation, but they don't yet have the experience of engaging with evidence and seeing the value that it can bring to their role. They're inquisitive about stepping into the space, but they can often find the language and the concepts of research intimidating and off-putting. So persona two, it's that practitioner who's got good ideas about different ways of working, who might want to start some practice research of their own, they might even have a rough plan for how to get started, but they lack the confidence or the skills to bring this to life, and they don't have access to the support or research evidence that they need. And then thinking about uh, Persona 3, and it's that practitioner who's got a really strong passion and personal motivation to pursue their interest in research and innovation via a more academic pathway, perhaps thinking about a research career, but they still face significant constraints in finding out about and accessing those opportunities. So we see our role as working collaboratively with all three of these persona, but in our case as Social Care Wales, we're focusing mainly on the first two. So that's building research awareness and building research capability. And then with persona three, it's more Martin's bag with Health and Care Research Wales, focusing on that traditional understanding of research capacity. So, to help the first two practitioners, we're in the process of designing a framework that guides practitioners as to exactly what research innovation and improvement skills mean, helping them to match those skills to the challenges that, um, that those challenges can help practitioners to solve. And then we're going to map and signpost to where existing training opportunities are. Some will suggest are adapted to make them right for social care, and we'll also identify where gaps in training are. Now, we've been working hard already to design some foundation initiatives that we plan to pilot with the workforce in the next few months, all based on the principle that anything we build needs to be sustainable, collaborative, right for the Welsh context, and ultimately it's got to result in service change, because that's what practitioners have told us motivates them to get involved in research. So our first initiative, bear with the picture on this one, um, is based around an offering of research and evidence summaries and other online resources that have been specifically prepared and curated for social care. 
practitioners told us that they don't know where to look for trusted research evidence when they're faced with complex situations within practice. And so they want summarised, accessible evidence with the practice messages drawn out again, right for the Welsh context, which is why we're going to be launching a new website with these offerings for them. People also told us that they want research skills training that they can trust, led by experts who recognise the constraints of and speak the language of social care. But they often don't want to go into academia to find that training. So they want the opportunity to have on-the-job coaching and practice-focused training where they and their peers can learn and do at the same time. So we're going to pilot research practice partnerships and approach to that. And that's an approach that's currently being piloted across six different social care settings uh, in England funded by NIHR. The approach brings together a practitioner from a local authority or provider organisation and they act as an evidence champion and a researcher who brings research evidence and research skills, together with a person with lived experience of using a particular area of social care. This team then spends dedicated, regular time together working to create and grow something that really matters in that social care team at that particular time. The researcher helps train and coach the practitioner to undertake small-scale practice uh, research projects, helps them access useful research and build their skills so that they can in turn work with their own teams. And we're already giving research to su support to some uh, consultant social workers who are here today, um, who've won a practice research leaders award from NIHR and we're supporting them as they build research awareness and build and mobilize knowledge in their teams. In all, oh, where have I gone? So another initiative, that's what I want to talk to you about now, is our innovation coaching service. And that's where coaches will work with practitioners to bring their ideas to life, helping them to develop skills in collective imagination and evaluation. And in so doing, the idea is that they support practitioners to generate new evidence and new approaches that could be spread and scaled. And we're also looking at how we can influence our partners' offerings we know that many deliver successful research and innovation courses and initiatives, but most social care practitioners don't feel that they cater for them or even don't know that they exist. So we're currently having discussions with the likes of the Small Business Research Ini Initiative, the Bevan Commission, Support and Delivery Centre, and so on, just to consider how they might make their offerings um, more accessible and relevant for social care. In all of this as partners, we're pulling in the same direction because we have the same aims to equip practitioners with research skills. But some courses may need a level of redesign. Some may, some, may need some repackaging, perhaps with diff different language. For instance, in social care, we often tend to use the term co-production rather than public and patient involvement. And likewise, taking a co-production approach to gathering, exploring and weaving together different types of evidence in the development of social care policy and practice is foundational to the developing enriched practice program that's operating out of Swansea and Bangor universities. So we're therefore expanding access to this program because it gives practitioners the practice focused on the job research skills training that they were talking to us about. Another way that we're weaving different perspectives together is through our evidence community, and that's a community of practice which brings together practitioners, researchers, and people who have lived experience, who've got a passion for social care research so that they can communicate and collaborate. And our final area to pilot will be about working more closely with our colleagues at Health and Care Research Wales faculty, handing the baton over more effectively when we find practitioners who are keen to pursue a social care research career. And on that note, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, Martin Elliott. Can we go straight to Martin? Is that okay?